Hello everybody. I'm going to be using a heart-shaped stone today from the molds from Happy Dotting Company on Etsy. I've painted it gold because I'm going to do the crackle effect. You guys have seen me do this before and if you haven't, check the description of this video. I put a couple tutorials in there. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm making sure that there's a nice solid coat of gold paint on this. I'm going to let it dry really, really well. Then I'm going to use Folk Art Crackle Medium link in the description. Um, I put a nice coat of that on and I let it dry really well. Um, it will look really dull once it's dry because we don't want it to be wet still when we use it. So now it's dry, much more dull. I'm going to be using aqua, uh, cerulean blue, and also some uh, lighter, light, light blue, more like a patina and I'm putting it on when that crackle paint is dry, when that crackle medium is dry, then you can put this on. And I'm going from one color to the next. So cerulean blue is around the bottom and the sides. Then I'm doing teal. Then I'm doing aqua. And I'm going to do a lighter color in the center, but I can see those brush strokes. So I'm going to grab a finger sponge <laughs> or any kind of sponge dauber link in the strip description for these ones. And I'm just going to kind of sponge that out and blend it in before it dries too quickly and starts to crackle because I don't want to ruin that crackle effect. You got to let it dry on its own. You don't want to mess with it too much. As you can see, it's already crackling. So it crackles very quickly. So I'm going to let that dry. And once it's done, I'm going to resin it. See how beautiful is that? It's been resined. I slowed it down so you can appreciate it. I've let it dry overnight. Um, it's ready to be painted on. A lot of people have asked me, can you actually paint on this? And yes, you can. And then I resin right over top of what I paint. So this is what I'm doing for my background. We're going to be painting a beautiful little chickadee and some berries on top of our blue crackle background. But this is just part one of this tutorial. If you like it just like this, you do it in whatever color you want. Off you go. You're done. You don't need me anymore. But if you want to paint a chickadee on top of this beautiful crackle background, I'm here for you. <laughs> so I'm going to be using a couple of different colors, some camel brown, some dark brown, real brown, maple syrup. Um, and I'm going to be using some white and black, of course. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of sketch it on with a paintbrush. My paintbrush isn't too big. Um, because this isn't a very big space to work with. It's only about four inches wide um, at its widest. So I'm just kind of sketching on what I think a chickadee should look like <laughs> or what I think I see with my eyes, <laughs> whatever you want to say. Just Google pictures of chickadees and go from there. And I'm just going to kind of sketch it on with paint instead of using pencils and stuff because you can't really do that on top of this beautiful background now pencil does not go well on top of resin. So I'm sketching it on using close colors from what I can tell. Mixing a little bit of camel with a little bit of black to make this gray color and I'm putting the white in where I see white and I'm really just being messy and sloppy with it because we're going to go over it with a fine brush afterwards and put some details in it. So this is like the rough draft. I just want to kind of get the shape and the colors and then detail afterwards. So I'm using some camel with white mixed in with it. I'm just going to go back and forth using these colors, black, white, camel, um, and I'm making the gray color with the camel and the black. And then the camel color mixed with white is what I'm doing for his lower, his belly area. He's going to be kind of fluffed up a little bit. He's, he's kind of chilly. It's a chilly November day. Um, but so he's just kind of puffed up, chilling on the branches. You don't see those branches yet, but I'm psychic. <laughs> there will be branches. <laughs> um, welcome back guys. I've missed you. Of course, you know that I miss you whenever I'm gone. Um, I actually just went camping in the trailer.
um, was a really fun experience and uh, new experiences for me and my son and for my husband as well. So it was really cool. We just got home, so that's why I'm a little late with this tutorial. Um, I painted this a few days ago, but now I'm I'm talking to you. <laughs> now I'm recording my voice. Um, so I'm just kind of sketching in still where I want certain colors to be, but I'm not making it perfect. I just kind of want to get the coloring right and the shape right. Then we can go in with a fine tooth comb or a fine lining brush, I should say, and uh, make everything the way we want it to. I did do a chickadee already. There is another chickadee tutorial uh, without a crackle background. Um, it was either from last year or the year before. This time of year, I always get requests for chickadees. Uh, so I thought I'd put one in my shop right now. This guy is going in there uh, as soon as the tutorial is up. So I always have people wanting chickadees or cardinals or blue jays, especially this time of year. So I thought the crackle background was a, a new way to display this beautiful bird. I saw lots of chickadees uh, this weekend when we were in the trailer. It was a lot of fun. So now I'm going in with my fine lining brush. I'm just going to kind of fuzz everything up a little bit, kind of make it resemble feathers as best I can. Uh, you can't really see the tail very well off to the side, but I'll show it to you later. This is my fine lining brush if you want to make one too. Um, I have a tutorial for that. <laughs> I have over 285 tutorials to be exact, um, and fine lining brush is one of them. So in my description of this video and all of my videos, you will find my fine lining brush, my resin tutorial, um, my blending brush, and uh, all the other stuff you need to know about this stone right here that we've created together. So you can't see it very well, but you can kind of see that I'm just kind of making little hairs, like little wisps, and they look like fuzzy little feathers and I'm shaping it as I go where I want everything to be. I don't like his beak the way it's pointed. I'm probably going to, uh, yeah, I'm just going to erase it. <laughs> there he goes, the beakless chickadee. Um, he can still breathe, guys, don't worry. He can still breathe. I'm going to put a new beak on as soon as possible. This is like open heart beak surgery <laughs> open artist open art beak surgery there we go there we go I'm here all week guys <laughs> there I think that looks better um all I did is wipe it off <laughs> um you can use like a, a q-tip or a little brush and just wipe it off if you're working on top of resin and then start over that's your little eraser it's very, very easy to correct any mistakes you make on top of resin. So I am still trying to add in the look of fuzziness in areas. So where I've got white, I'm adding some white fuzzies. Where I have gray, I'm adding the gray fuzzies and just kind of blending everything in together so it looks like feathers. And you can take as long as you need to, although I've sped this up so that you're not bored. Um, you can take as long as you need to, to make these look like feathers. Here and there, I'm making um, little swoops so that it looks like the back feathers are joining up. Um, and little white swipes with white paint on top of the black to make that look like feathers as well. I'm really not being specific. I'm just kind of doing what I see, doing what I feel it should look like. <laughs> um, and it might not look right. It might not. It might not be perfect, but that's okay. Pretty sure still resembles a chickadee. So I'm, I'm okay with that. So I'm bringing some white down by his tail and I'm putting some more streaks of white down there to look like feathers. I've just got to make his belly look a little fuzzy as well. But first, I'm going to put like a grayish 
streak across the top of his beak so it looks like a shine. So you can kind of see the top of his beak, just to kind of give it some definition. And then we're going to do something really simple with the eyeball. I hope that I place it right. Um, but pretty much I'm just going to use a little bit of the grayish camel color. And I did like the round part around the back of the eye. And then I'm going to use like almost black, but it's more of a dark gray. I'm going to mix together some some black and gray and make it super black and then I'm just going to do like right over the eyeball you'll be able to see that soon but this is the shine we got to put a little bit of shine in the eyeball I'm going to bring it closer so that you guys can see it a little bit better because I feel like maybe you can't see what I'm doing <laughs> Okay, so now that it's a little bit closer, you can see there's a little line around behind the eyeball. There's a white line to give it some shine. And now I'm going above with like a dark charcoal gray, but you'll still be able to see that. Even though you can't see it very well right now, you will be able to see that later on. So here I'm gonna do it again so that you guys can see it close up just in case. So I've used a little bit of that camel and white mix together and I've kind of erased that line. I just needed it there for, uh, for a second so that I knew where the back of my eyeball was going to be. Now I'm going to add the white to give the eyeball some shine. And then I'm going to bring up that charcoal gray in the same spot that we just kind of erased with the black paint. So I'm going to bring it back up around there, but it's noticeably lighter than the black. You want to be able to see that area. So that's, that's his eyeball. <laughs> um, I'm not going to make it fancy. That's all we needed to do. There's some bits on the beak that I need to erase. Uh, where you can see I went over the edge. I don't want his beak to be all bumpy like that. So I am going to fix that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, now we're just going to continue on making his chest and belly fuzzier. And I'm going to speed it up so that you're not bored. Because <laughs> this tutorial would have been hours and hours long if I didn't speed it up like this. So I'm just gonna keep wisping on the little feathers until I feel like it looks all right. And I'm gonna gradually use a little bit darker underneath, underneath the feather, the, the wing. There's gonna be some darker camel color in there. Just keep wisping until it looks like feathers. That's all I can tell you. It's actually not as difficult as it might look when you first glance at the painting. I have a lot of people who say, you know, do you have something that's like a little easier if you work with me and trust the process? This might look really difficult, but it's not as difficult as it might look. It might look complicated, but it's really not. It's super easy. The worst part about it is waiting for things to dry because <laughs> that's boring. I don't like that. <laughs> So he looks like he has no legs and he needs branches to sit on. So I'm just fuzzing up his head a little bit more. It's shiny, so it looks like I'm using a different color, but it is just black. Um, but yeah, we're going to give him some feet sitting on a branch and then we're going to add some berries. Um, but it's up to you if you want to add like snow to the branch or if you want to put them on um, like a pine tree branch. It's totally up to you. I'm going to put berries because I did last time when I did a chickadee and I just like doing that. See, I'm erasing using a dotting tool. I'm just kind of smoothing out the edges of his beak and it's literally just like scraping off the dry paint and I just brush it off. And yeah, he's a little bit fuzzier around the back of the head here. He did his hair this morning. 
and he looks nice and warm and cozy, all fluffed up like that. <laughs> Does that look like he's feathered now? <laughs> you let me know. You let me know in the comments. So I'm going to be doing a cute little gingerbread house. It might even be a fairy gingerbread house. Um, haven't decided yet, um, but stay tuned for that coming out as well as a couple of other ones. Uh, and make sure you leave your ideas for me in the comments section below so that I can write them down and focus on those and continue to paint for you guys because right now focus is is difficult <laughs> with what's been happening in our family um so I need your help with that give me your ideas so that I can concentrate on those for you so I'm going to use some dark brown real brown uh, and I'm just going to kind of figure out where I want to put some branches here and I'm just using same uh, fine lining brush but I will go in and thicken the branches more afterwards this is just to kind of sketch it on because um, I don't really know what I want to do how he's going to be sitting on it yet uh, I have to make sure that it's close enough that his legs aren't really really long and they look funny because he's not a flamingo no he's not just letting you know he has short legs <laughs> he's got to grasp onto that branch so that he can look beautiful with the berries in the background this is his photo op so I hope everyone is doing well we did already have our Canadian Thanksgiving so I wanted to wish happy Thanksgiving to all of my uh all of everyone in the world who celebrates Thanksgiving at another time than what I do <laughs> there. That's the safest way to put it. So I, I hope you all have an amazing Thanksgiving or if you've already had one, I hope it was amazing. I already had one and it was okay. <laughs> it was pretty good. I'm still very thankful. So I am just adding a little bit to his tail here and outlining the feather or the, the wing along the side. And I know this seems strange, but I just put a streak of camel, that camel color down the branch. Now I'm going to kind of like swipe it along and kind of make it look like wood, like branch. Um, it's just to kind of give it like a texture, a little look to it. Uh, that's completely optional. You don't have to do that, but do it while your dark paint is wet still or else it won't work very well. I'm just going to keep going in back and forth until I get the desired look, but do it while your paint is wet because it, it tends to streak better or um, blend better when it's wet, but don't, don't worry about it. You don't have to do that. I like to also outline my branches in gold, but I'm not going to do that today. So now I can add his toesies because he's gladly hanging on for dear life now that we've given him the gift of feet and legs. His legs are there, but they're hidden under his fuzzy feathers, but they are there. So no worries. I, I only say that, you know, he can still breathe, even though I took his beak off. I only say that kind of thing because I've actually had people comment about like frogs missing arms or legs that you can't see, but, um, that's because it's hidden behind the flower, different comments. So I just feel it's safe to just warn you ahead of time, give you that little warning so that you don't get scared. Like, yikes, he's a full grown bird and he can't breathe now. How, how could you do that? You never know with the, the internets and the people who get on them, <laughs> what somebody might complain about. So I'm just being safe. Don't come for me. <laughs> All right. So I've brought some more branches up there because I realized I want berries over there too, on that side of the stone. Um, but that's optional. Whatever you do with this is completely optional. If you stopped at the crackle part, I, I love the crackle part. That's like one of my favorite things to do. It has such a beautiful look to it. Um, 
So yeah, by all means, stop at the crackle. <laughs> and you've already seen me paint a chickadee as well. So this is just a different way of doing it. This looks a little different. Um, the background's different. Uh, it's just to give you some ideas. So now I'm using a couple of different shades of red. So it's like apple red and engine red. So one's a little bit darker. I just used a Q-tip to wipe up red that I didn't mean to put there. <laughs> I'm going to do some fine stems that our berries are going to hang off of. And I'm just using that bright apple red for those stems. And then I'm going to color it in with some engine red afterwards. But I'm also going to put a little bit of melon pink, pink melon uh, to lighten some of the areas of the berries later on. But I'm going to speed this process up. I'm just, I stuck with the, the apple red because I wanted them to be super bright. So I ended up just staying with the apple red. You don't have to use engine red if you don't want to, but I do like the stems being that deep red. So just put berries wherever you want them different sizes depending on how far away they are or how close up to the bird they are. Totally up to you. I'm using a little blending brush to kind of smush out the paint uh, paintbrush strokes. And then I'm using a little bit of pink melon in certain areas of the berry. You can see it's just in like the lower parts or the very ends of the berries. It's just a little bit lighter, but you can barely see a difference. So before I, I have to let these berries dry a little bit um, and we're going to go back to them in a second. So I'm just going to outline the toes, um, make sure that the toes are the way I want them to be. I will also be outlining carefully the branch um, with a little bit of black underneath uh, just to kind of define them, set them apart from the background. Um, but I'm just kind of adjusting everything and making sure it looks the way I want it to while the berries are drying and then once the berries are done uh, we can go back in and work on them it's going to take a moment though and i apologize there are notifications going off again while i'm talking to you so i'm sorry for that <laughs> okay the berries are dry so i'm going to go in with a dark brown and i'm going to do these little fuzzy things out the end of the berries please tell me the technical term I don't know what it is, little little hairs coming out the ends of the berries. Um, I see them in pictures, so I'm going to do them, but I don't know what they're called. And we're not technical here at Rachel's Rocks. We just do the thing that makes everybody say, ooh, <laughs> that's pretty. That's what we do. So now I'm going to make these berries look a little bit shiny like we did with his eye. Put a little bit of a white bit on the berries where you think the light might hit them just right. Don't have to be a perfectionist. They do look shiny as soon as you do that. So they're shiny berries. I'm telling you they are. That's what they are. They're shiny. <laughs> and I'm going to let this dry for a little while before we resin it. Um, but of course, I'm going to show you it resined. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So hold your breath. Here it comes. Here it comes. <gasps> there. Another coat of resin over top of everything seals it all in, keeps everything in place. You can't scratch those berries off. His beak's not going anywhere. It's going to stay like this now and it's going to look beautiful. This might look beautiful on a little stand up on a shelf uh, for those chickadee lovers. And even if you don't really like chickadees, but you really like the background, <laughs> hey, I got you covered. So this guy's going in my Etsy shop right away. I had lots of fun, you guys. I love you. I miss you so much. Stay tuned for next next time. I, it'll be very soon because I've, I've already started it. Uh, so stay tuned. Keep painting. And don't forget, hit the like button. Hit the share button. And leave your ideas in the comments. I will see them and I will write them down. Thank you, guys. I love you. Bye.